that means is Woo. time to get into it. So, uh, hi, everybody. This is a pod within a pod. This is a, a hindsight 2020, but today we're called uh, Hidden Treasures. And basically what this is, uh, are uh, me and my co-host Arnold, we get some friends together and we talk about artists that we feel didn't get the recognition they deserved or, you know, they should have been bigger or, you know, kind of like obscure, underrated artists. We talk about them and we give you some suggestions on what to uh, check out uh, in their discography if you're starting to get into them. So um, first and foremost, uh, let's go around introducing everybody on the podcast. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Francisco Flores, uh, a.k.a. Franny. We have my co-host here, Arnold Trevino. He couldn't make it last week to the main pod, so I'm glad you're back. Uh, yeah. h- how are you, bro? I'm not doing, uh, doing too shabby. Not too shabby. Um, here in Nashville, uh, that's why I had to not be on the main podcast, just because I was driving from Laredo all the way to Nashville in one day. So that was fun. Um, got to listen to a lot of Milk Street podcast, uh, which is just food, uh, like podcast. So interesting. And all right, yeah. okay. Uh, we also have, uh, right below him, we have a friend of the podcast. She was on our debut episode. Uh, everybody's favorite part of that episode was her hair. So you all asked for it, and now it's back. We have Victoria Craddock. How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. <laughs> all right, I haven't done so... anything to like contribute. I'm sorry. I've been really boring lately. <laughs> no worries. Uh, and then we also have... Uh, panelist on our Carly Rae Jepsen episode. She will be on next week for Carly Rae Jepsen part two. We've got a local artist, Lex. How are you doing? What's up? I'm doing good. Just chilling. Just handling this this quarantine, making the most of it. Hey, man, the bars are going to open soon. So, fuck oh, it, yeah. You know, let's, know. let's see how that goes. I'm so <laughs> sad that Electric Lounge closed, though. That was my favorite place. Did it close? Yeah. Wasn't the, weren't, they were going to get the ICP to play a show there, weren't they? Like at some point. <laughs> were they? With Radio I Star so. or whatever? Yeah, they I were going to get ICP and then they were going to get She Wants Revenge. And that was like the one show I was like, I really want to go to that. And then the, that one the got promotion dropped too. Company. Yeah. Didn't, yeah. Something with the I would have been, I, I would have been hella down to see ICP though. I'm not going to lie. Just to say I did it. Family, family, (laughs) dude. I'll get into that later. So, uh, (laughs) yeah. So, uh, like I said, this is called uh, Hidden Treasures, and you guys can comment on here if you if you'd like as well. The people watching, Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around. Everybody here has uh, thought up an artist that they like to talk about that they feel didn't get the shine that they deserved. Um, We kind of go over their history a little bit, why we like them so much. And what is a, a song, album, EP, mixtape, whatever you want to throw out there that you think we should listen to. If you guys in the comments have any artists that you guys want to talk about, let us know and we'll read it out here and we'll discuss those as well. So, yeah, let's get into it. Um, I normally save myself for last. So we'll start with next to me, Arnold, who, who you got? Who, who are we talking uh-huh. about? All right, so today I will be reviewing, well, not reviewing, I'll be discussing uh, an artist I liked. Um, this He made an, his first debut album in 2006, so I'm going to just put this right here. Uh, so he used to go by the name Christian Scott, now he goes by Christian Scott Atunde Aduja. Uh, he's from, he's a trumpeter, trumpet player from New Orleans, and in this album, Rewind That, he uh, made when he was just, you know, right out of school, only really playing the trumpet like for 10-ish years. Uh, and he was actually 22 or 23 when he made the album. Uh, and he actually got a Grammy nomination on this album. And it was his first album. Uh, so okay. the reason I bring this okay. artist up and why I like the album so much is uh, because he's he kind of brings in his hip hop R and B influences into a world into the jazz world and he even makes his own uh subgenre of nouveau swing. I don't really know French, so I can't really pronounce it that well. Uh and you know, this album came out in two thousand six and I feel like our generation kind of missed this album 
due to the fact that we were neck deep in 2000s emo music. You know, in 2006, you had, like, yeah. you had Taking Back Sunday's Louder Now, Hawthorne Heights, If Only You Were Lonely. If and Only You Were Lonely. And Oof. then My Chemical Romance, Black Parade. So, of course, we missed this album, and uh, most of us didn't even listen to jazz. I, heck, I will say I missed this album because, um, you know, I was in that emo music. And it was until, like, later on um, that my buddy Dennis sent me the, the title track uh, of this album. Also, you know, rewind that. And it's got some, like, you know, it's got a, a different taste of jazz. You got, like, a like a kind of head bobby, stink face guitar riff with some, like, impeccable drums and, like, some, some great trumpet. So, uh, you know, I understand that we missed out on this album because, you know, we were into fuse and everything on fuse was everything we listened to and uh, steven's untitled rock show exactly Remember and that? then you know i also got into the jazz game later on and yeah i missed this album um i will say like uh i also like this album because my one of my favorite drummers thomas pridgen's on this he's uh also the drummer to my favorite album from the mars volta the bedlam and goliath uh so I definitely recommend to check this out uh, and a little bit more about this album. He got 11 tracks on this debut and he didn't want to show off his skills by making debut full of songs written by others. So he only features two covers. Uh, one of them is uh, by Miles Davis and it's his famous So What song. And the other song is by his uncle, uh, Donald Harrison Jr. So uh, if you like jazz, if you like hip hop R&B, if you want to, you know, get a taste of something different, I would definitely recommend this this album. And I'll put it up here one more time. So Christian Scott, rewind that. So you'd say this is more like a like a hip hop jazz fusion record almost. It's it's definitely jazz fusion, but you get subtle hints of the hip hop and R B. I wouldn't be like, oh yeah, it's definitely like hip hop and R and B like heavy mm. influence. It's like there's a touch, there's touches of it this influence okay uh yeah. i just had like a this is more like a like a, a philosophical question here so i understand why you say that you know he didn't get the shine that he deserved i mean i've definitely never heard of this album i don't know if anybody else here has but uh nope. could you truly say that he's an underrated artist if he had a grammy nod i would say underrated during to our generation because the fact that we okay. probably didn't even listen to jazz at this age and even if we did okay. we probably had, didn't have friends that talked about this so that's why i would say like with it's hidden treasure to more of our age group i don't know about you know mm -hmm. I, and i'm also talking to other like people that got into jazz they only kind of reference miles davis or john coltrane like you know big name artists that it's like our parents listen to you know yeah of yeah, course so yeah. it's definitely yeah. something the, 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 i would recommend the stuff you find at a record shop yeah, exactly. This is and um, this is something like you would have to like maybe do some digging and be like, oh, I, like I guess I'll try this, you know, because this is not a name that pops out in like the community well, that I talk to, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So one more time, put that down here. Yeah, I'll put if that, you're that into, banner right there. Christian uh, Scott. jazz. You know, like a cool little jazz record. Mm -hmm. Christian Scott. Rewind that. Um, I'm definitely gonna look this one up. Uh, mm -hmm. I still haven't really gotten into jazz. I want to, but check you know, out the, uh, the title I, I track. Feel like There's a my, video on YouTube. My musical attention span. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that a listen. Mm -hmm. uh, Victoria, Lex, does that sound interesting to y'all? It does. I'm it's real awesome. into like jazz fusion stuff. It's real cool. It's real uh, intricate, real complex. Yeah. I yeah. think you'll like it. If you're a drummer definitely. and you play drums, I yeah. think you'll like it. Yeah, I'll check it out for sure. All right. Dope, dope. Next up, we got Victoria. What what album or what, what hidden treasure do you have for us today? I have an alternative indie synth pop band that I adore. Uh, it's called Courtship, and their album Denial and Paradise. I think is their actually don't. Know. I think it's their first album, but I don't know. I really liked it because it's very um, poppy. It sounds very electronic i'm a big fan of synth in general uh it's kind of i guess i wouldn't say it's very lyric heavy it's very just more like you can just enjoy it not have to really focus on the lyrics 
and I do have kind of some things where you're like, okay, yeah, uh, I do believe that. I don't know, very generic kind of lyrics in a way, but the music has really got me. I like sense, I like pop. And also just, it's these two guys, they were like supporting band members of other like rock bands and they decided like, oh, that's kind of boring. Like, and met trying to get into another band and just started playing like that because they both had love of synths for some reason. And I don't know, not much to say about it. It's really, really good music. The song, like the musical aspect is great. That's what I like a lot about it. But no one's ever heard of them. Whenever oh. I bring it up, they're just like, oh, never heard that. What no, other bands I were they in? Just... Oh. Yeah, well, what on. other bands were these dudes in? Let's see. Because when you listen synth pop and stuff like that, uh, I'm just imagining like Hello Goodbye or, or something like that, you know? No, I think I it's, it's like that. But... Yeah, it's a little more alternative, if that makes sense. So like, not heavier, like, but not as, no. I don't know how to describe it. You have to listen to them. I'm really bad at like describing like things. I'm very sorry. It's really bad, I'm sorry. No, I uh, one like of their, description. Uh, they both played in this rock band called Blood Boy that I've never heard of. If you guys have, I mean, cool. I've never heard of that. But I mean, they've also like written songs for like the band Dreamers, if you've ever heard of them. Mm -hmm. They're really big in that like, indie scene i guess but yeah it's one of the, like, the kind of album you can listen to and just have a good time it always like, puts me in a good mood whenever i'm sad i'm just like okay i can play this and feel like a little bit better you know what track do you like out of this album bad fun is number one perfect people is also really good that one i just like the music a lot like the like i don't know what it's i guess like it's the guitar riffs that get me like they're really like and then um sunroof is also really good that's more like summary a lot more like m83 in a way i guess but yeah okay. those three for sure like the good ones like the top ones that i like listen to on repeat the other ones are good too but like those like bad fun was the first one i heard off them with their single and that one like best one like that's the one that i tell everyone to listen to to get into them okay so um uh, how did you end up coming across this band because you know if you say that like nobody's ever really heard of them I definitely haven't. And then you mentioned the band that they were in, and I've never heard of them either. So how how did you yeah. end up uh, discovering uh, Courtship? Oh, it was, it was on my Discover Weekly on Spotify. It was their song. I had seen, like, I didn't listen to them. I just saw the, like, album cover, and I was like, that's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my fucking life. Hell yeah. And I just ignored it. And then later on, <laughs> at, if you've heard of that, like, Obscurify thing that's going around for Spotify, where, like, we'll give you playlists of just, like, obscure music. I went on there and I heard, yeah. I saw Bad Fun again and I was like, you know what? This is like a sign. It's the second time, I've, second time I've seen it, so I might as well listen to it. Phenomenal. Changed my life. I was like, wow. I played myself not hearing it the first time I like saw it. So I can give Spotify Discover Weekly Ever. a good like star for that. You know, I've always ignored those like Spotify Discover Weeklies. I, I need to get into them. Uh, you know, no, they're super hit or miss. Like, it's cool really stuff. rare. I'll get, like, a song or two out of them, like, every, like, two, three weeks. Because they update weekly, but every once in a while, there's some, like, bangers in there. All right. So, again, uh, down here, that is Courtship, and the album is called Denial in Paradise. If you're into kind of synth poppy uh, music, I'd say give it a shot. You said one song sounded very M83-ish, right? That, that sounds yes, like Sunroof. Up my alley. I'm into that. Sunroof. So, yeah, definitely get into that. Give that a shot. And uh, anything else you want to say about the record? Or any of you guys have any questions about this record? Just so you can kind of get a, a bigger picture of it? Just listen to it. Guess not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So... <laughs> And now we've got Lex. Lex, what do yeah. you bring for us today? Okay, so I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, this guy. His name is Stokely Williams, but his stage name is Stokely, right? Just his first name. Uh, he was in a boy band. I nice. guess you could call it a boy band. Um, it was called Mint Condition in the 90s. It was like an R&B type of group. I don't know if y'all have heard of Mint Condition. No, I have mm -hmm. not. Yeah. And I listen to a few boy bands back in the day really well what's so, different about this yeah, boy band? 
is that uh like they played all the instruments so they actually you know they had talent they were, talent you know they, yeah. they were a boy band they like, were a okay. band of men yes <laughs> a band of boys of a talented band of boys. men and uh all right. Like not only did he sing the songs for Mint Condition, but he wrote the songs and he also played the drums for the songs. So that's pretty cool. That's something that most people don't know about him. But um, in 2017, he started doing some solo stuff. He was already kind of getting a little bit older. He's probably like in his 40s. Uh, and he made this album called Introducing Stokely. And it's my... For sure, one of my top four albums of all time, aside from from the one I sent you all in the group chat, this one is like yeah, it's a masterpiece. It's like a so when he was in mint condition, it was more like the traditional R and B type stuff, you know. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember like the '90s types of drums that they would have. You remember like the snare sound classic from the '90s. So that was that was kind of due to uh, what Mint Condition kind of set up. Like, they kind of started that trend. Mm. But what Stokely did was he kind of modernized this 90s R&B sound, and he made it his own. So um, it has a lot of, like, traditional bass, uh, piano, drums, like actual drum sets, but he also adds a lot of electronic elements into it. And he does it in a way that it all blends together well, and it doesn't sound like too much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, this album really had a huge impact on me. And I also, uh, like, about a year and a half ago, I was, uh, like, going through a lot of anxiety problems. And with the anxiety came, like, a little bit of depression since they're kind of tied together, right? Mm -hmm. And I was yeah. able to, to kind of overcome that within the next few months and when uh when i felt like i overcame that i found this album right so i was already kind of like on a high like an emotional type of high yeah and you know how you hear some albums and they just like release good energy like they make you feel like like you release endorphins Right? Yeah, Carly Rae Jepsen. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. I really Carly really Rae like Jepsen's it. emotion. Yeah, yeah, is... yeah, yeah. I, you, you laugh now. Yeah, but that's so... a fucking banger. <laughs> Play that alone in the car. Yeah. So this album was that for me. Like I was on a high, and listening to that even like shot me even higher, and it made me feel like on top of the world. So, love that album for sure. Yeah, tell us more about the tracks. Like how many nice. how many tracks are in this album, and uh, your favorites. I think there's about 13, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the first one that I ever heard from that album was called Way Up. Mm -hmm. And it's a kind of a higher tempo song. Uh, it has a lot of uh, synths in it. It has a lot of like layering of his vocals. And he has a real signature voice. Like if you hear his voice, it reminds you of the 90s because his voice is real, real iconic. Um, but... Uh, his chorus says, uh, cause I'm way up, got me feeling way up, uh, like I'm walking on the moon, way up, right? And so, yeah, I heard that and I was like, yeah, I'm sold, like I love it. And uh, so there's way up, there's also one called organic, that one's real piano based, uh, real melodic, I love his melodies that he chooses and his bass lines. Uh, there's one called forecast. And it's about a, a relationship that's kind of toxic, but he's still, you know, he's still into yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, being there. Yeah, there's a lot of them that are just gold gems. But yeah. Dope, dope. I definitely want to check this one out because I unashamedly love boy bands, uh, Backstreet Boys, my shit and sing mm -hmm. my shit uh i was also really big into boys to men those dudes are fucking dope and uh lfo's yeah. uh summer girls is well, probably one of my <laughs> favorite songs for road trips have y'all heard that one uh -uh. and sing the uh, sing the chorus dude, or something. oh my god 
Oh my god, dude. I, okay. So <laughs> this is the epitome of a meme song. Like LFO Summer Girls is the epitome of like what the fuck even is this? Yeah. But it's so stupid that it's endearing. The the chorus, I shit you not, is a uh, new kids on the block had a bunch of hits. Chinese food makes me sick. Uh, what's the rest of it? I can't remember. Oh, okay. uh, something about uh, my girl likes to wear uh, amber something, coffee. Something, something. I. No, no, no. That comes. That comes after. It's like uh, I love girls that wear Abercrombie and Fitch. I take her if I had one wish. wish. Uh, something, something. The summer. So it's all uh, okay. lyrics like that. There's so many, there's so many good lines. There's references to Macaulay Culkin. Kevin nice. Bacon, uh, fucking Paul Revere. <laughs> like, it's just, it's lyrically all over the place. And I absolutely love it. it it's, it's, the, it's the best work song ever. Uh, I'm not saying that, you know, this has anything to do with the music that you're talking about. I'm pretty sure the album you're describing is genuinely no, yeah, good, yeah. you <laughs> know, good. for all the right reasons. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, LFO Summer Girls. Uh, definitely, it's, it's definitely it's one amazing. to check it's, out. Um, what about what? What's your opinion <laughs> on Ninety Eight Degrees with Nick Lachey? Who am I? <laughs> Our friend, Dude, I anyone? Anybody? <laughs> I know because you listen to boy bands, Franny. And it's just uh, here's how little I cared about Ninety Eight Degrees. I didn't know Nick Lachey from being in 98 Degrees. I just knew him from being Jessica Simpson's husband on that one reality <laughs> show they had. Like that's, that's the only way I yeah. knew about him. And he had that shitty tribal sun tattoo that had the 98 Degrees inside. And I was like, what the fuck is that all about? And I was like, oh, that's his band? Like, ooh. Yeah, yeah same. Poor I guy. don't know what, what, what y'all are talking about. <laughs> He's Jessica Simpson's husband. That's that's his. Nice. Uh, that's what he's uh, he's known for, ex-husband. That's what nice. he's known for. And then it turns out he was in the boy band before that. Who 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 knew, right? Um, I sure did it until I researched his ninety-eight degrees tattoo. So, uh, uh, should I get into my record, or are we still talking boy bands? Because I, I I'll can put it one more down, one time, Woo! one more time down here. Yes, Stokely. Oh. One, one more Stokely. time, Stokely's. Yeah, y'all get that. That actually does get those endorphins, so guys. I'll check it out. Check it out. Well, when, when I need my endorphin rush, I listen <laughs> to uh, Carly Rae Jepsen. Oh Ocean. God, uh, dude! It's oh, a genuinely great album. I I actually love it, dude. It's a uh, banger of an album. If they had, okay, I don't want to roast too hard, but if they had an instrumental version of that whole album, I would. I'd be into it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's somewhere out there on the YouTube world that somebody just probably. Put yeah, yeah. I'd rather I'd rather check that out. But I love Carly's voice. So me too. Her voice is. An I instrument. mean, she she didn't spend nine days vaping at a Holiday Inn to not have her vocals put into the record. You know, like she made 200 songs for that album. She did. Uh, That's I feel crazy. like. I feel like. Carly Rae Jepsen's Emotion is the album that we'll always talk about later on, even after Dude. we do this for a long while. Every episode is going to call back to that episode. Um, but, uh, so, is it cool if I get into my album, or do we still got to do yeah. something Go for else? It. All right, so, uh, you guys are in the group chat. The people watching aren't, so maybe to you guys it's no surprise but I'm going to be talking about Gregory and the Hawk. Uh, and the album that I'm recommending is called Mini and Kichi. So why did I choose Gregory and the Hawk? Uh, like I said, the beginning of this section, uh, this is hidden treasures, artists that didn't make it as big as they should have, that didn't get the recognition that they should have. And Gregory and the Hawk is like uh, an anomaly because one of her songs was like huge, huge when I was in high school, but it was attributed to the wrong artist. So Arnold and I, we were in the same high school, so maybe you heard the song. I don't know about Victoria or Lex. I'm thinking maybe Victoria did because it's very like acoustic-y, like singer songwritery. And the song is called Boats and Birds. Do you guys remember the song? 
I remember that one. Okay. Now, when you heard it, who, who what was the artist that you saw it from? Like, who, who do you remember who supposedly wrote it? it? It was not Gregory and the Hawk. I remember never hearing that name when I heard that song for the first time. I remember that vividly that I was like, damn, who is this? And they were like, oh, just whoever. And I was like, okay, whatever. But not Gregory okay. and the Hawk. So I don't remember it. So, but... so uh, the band that this was attributed to was acoustic pop duo, The Scene Aesthetic, who, for comparison, Gregory and the Hawk is one girl, one guitar. Uh, her name is Meredith, uh, I can't pronounce her, Me Meredith Gaudreau, and it's just her and her guitar. The scene aesthetic is two singers and one guitar, and they're both guys. So how you confuse them, I have no fucking clue. But um, this is back from the wild, wild west of musical file sharing, so when everybody was on LimeWire and shit. So okay. everybody downloaded Boats and Birds, but for some reason, the version that they downloaded was under the scene aesthetic when they never, they didn't cover it. They never shouted it out. Like there was literally no connection except for the fact that they were acoustic songs. So everybody who downloaded this song had it under the scene aesthetic. And the way that I found out about this song was that uh, uh, one of my cousins was super into the game Kingdom Hearts. Remember, remember that game? That yeah, absolute masterpiece. Okay. Uh, so, so he was super into Kingdom Hearts, and he sent me a YouTube link for an AMV, the uh, animated music Thank videos. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It was a, a <laughs> it was just, <laughs> it was just a bunch of scenes from Kingdom Hearts set to boats and birds by scene aesthetic such a and i was thing. and and i remember hearing this song and i like scene aesthetic they were a very good you know acoustic duo and i was like what album is this on and who's the girl singing on this album because she has a lovely voice and i want to know if she did anything else and then i stumbled upon uh the full version of boats and birds because the version everybody had was the demo version it was just acoustic just her her guitar uh i made this joke before but i'll say it again every indie couple in my high everybody wearing cardigans and moccasins they were all like oh my god this is our song you know so that's how i came across it well I, like that's how i realized everybody else knew about it was because of that and i came i came upon the full version of the song and I discovered her EP, the Boats and Birds EP, and I ended up really, really, really liking it. But that's not the record I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about her debut full length, which is called Mini and Kichi. Uh, came out in, I think, 2006? No, it came out in 2007. 2007, Mini and Kichi. Uh, what do I love about this record? I mean, uh, singer-songwriter vibe, you know, very simple uh, guitar and vocals. She added more instrumentation. There's some drums here. There's some keys, you know, something to kind of fill out the sound. But more than anything, it's just her voice is so beautiful. It's so, so hushed. It sounds so fragile that it really draws you in when, when you listen to it. Uh, it's it's part of that, like, it's mainly her voice that made Boats and Birds such a hit with, like, all the indie kids in, in, in school. Like, it, it's such a beautiful, beautiful, like, lullaby-ish quality to it. And that just, you know, gets magnified in uh, in, in Mini and Kichi. Uh, the opening track, Oats We So, it's, it's so good. It, it has, you know, like, a, some, like, kind of, like, uh, some kind of punchier drums in the background, but it never loses that fragility to it. It still sounds very mellow, very quiet, very soft. And then uh, right after that, you have the song August Moon has some banjo in it, has a more folkier sound. And from there on, you go into my favorite track, which is if you listen to one song from hers, as much as I would like to say it'd be Boats and Birds because that's her biggest hit, I would say deviate from that a little bit and listen to uh, Wild West, 
uh, the opening chords and just her op like just her vocal melody in that song is just it's so serene. I've never heard a song before that genuinely genuinely puts me in a in a peaceful place. You know, like I don't give a shit about anything as soon as that song comes on and I just feel very, very peaceful. And, uh, and, and I attribute that a lot to her vocals and everything about this song just fits so perfectly to set that mood. And yeah, she, she, she's a hidden treasure. She definitely deserves way more recognition than what she got. She was a great singer songwriter, especially around that time where people were transitioning from like emo music to more acoustic driven music. Uh, I remember Dallas Green, City in Color, was really taking off around that time. Uh, Anthony Green of Circus Survive put out his solo album, Avalon, around that time too. And it was very acoustic driven, very folky. You know, so in this crop of, you know, indie tinged folk artists, she should have been a big name in that. You know, uh, maybe not like mainstream success. Like I don't see her like getting Grammys or whatever. But she should have been really big in the scene that she came up in. But fucking LimeWire had to attribute her biggest song to the wrong artist. And she never got any of that. And she's still making music. She just released an, an album called uh, On the Orange Mountain. I think that came out in 2018. And it's fucking gorgeous. You know, she's toiling away in, you know, near obscurity. And I think that's super unfair because she creates really beautiful, really serene music. Um, it's been getting a little bit more uh, electronic based. And even then, um, I don't mean she's like fucking EDMing it or whatever, but she's adding a lot of keys, a lot of synthesized drums, but still keeping that homely acoustic feel to the record. Uh, her other most recent record, uh, Leche, is also really fucking good. So... Um, Honestly, going back and listening to her music is what made me want to create this segment mm -hmm. just so I can talk about her and be like, y'all need to listen to this because. Uh, Let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. So because of this person's mistake, you know, the wrong band got the recognition, right? But do yeah. you think you would have like this song would have even been popular if it wasn't for that tag Ooh. onto someone else? That's fair. That's I, a fair point. I I think the song has enough merits on its own. I looked up, uh, see if there was a Gregory and the Hawk hashtag on Instagram, and history is kind of correcting itself. Like people know who she is now. Like not enough, but people know. And all that I'm seeing are people doing covers of Boats and Birds. So mm -hmm. the the song had this thing. Like the the, the song had all the attributes, especially around that time that, you know, acoustic, you know, indie folk was really becoming a thing. It, it had, you know, it checked all the marks to be a successful song in that genre, especially when it was like a very male dominated genre. Like I said, it was Dallas Green, you know, Anthony Green, fucking, uh, I forgot this other dude who was also big around that time. Uh, something Fitzgerald, I can't remember his fucking first name. But, you know, like all these dudes were like kind of like it was all dudes. And then you had like mm -hmm. this fucking songstress. It, it could have been huge to have that kind of representation on there. And her fucking mm -hmm. killing the game with this like amazing collection of out of songs in uh, Mini and Kichi. But everybody thought it was scene aesthetic. They're good on their own. They have good songs. Dear Time Traveler, Beauty and the Breakdown, Heavy Life's the Crown. All of those are great songs. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's not their fault. They didn't ask to have that song attributed to them. But, mm -hmm. you know, they inadvertently kind of just stole her momentum. And what could have been, you know, a moderately successful career is nowhere near where it should have been because of that. So but because of that, song? I do think she's a hidden treasure. Is you know a lot of bands have that one make it or break it song that you know you hear it yeah. and you're into it. All, all time low had Dear Maria count me in. Everything after that they were good songs, but they didn't reach those heights. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, uh, fucking check yes Juliet by We the Kings. Check yes Juliet by We the Kings. You know that song was pretty dope, and then nobody gives a shit what else they did. 
you know yeah. See, that could have easily been Fucking carly ray jepson if she would call me maybe but she she made 200 she songs dropped emotion you know she yeah she dropped i really really like you mm. and uh <laughs> she really did and even yeah, that uh, album doesn't get that the same praise that it should exactly so yeah, which we'll yeah, talk about that, in the episode <laughs> so <laughs> definitely um check out every artist we've talked about today but you know it'll make me happy if i hear some people tell me that they love greg i, I already turned one of our uh panelists into a fan uh in the group chat uh fernando martinez who's going to be on this sunday's episode talking about the swellers he now loves this album so i think that's that's important to note you know mm-hmm. I, I have somebody co-signing that it's got Gregory and the to Hawk is actually really fucking good. It, it, it definitely does. So uh, mm-hmm. we've got about 20 minutes left, and we talked about the uh, the albums here. Anybody want to discuss any anything else, uh, music news? Uh, I don't know if this matters to anybody else here, but one of my favorite al- uh, one of my favorite artists just dropped a new album, Jeff Rosenstock. Uh, mm-hmm. Surprise album. Just put it out on Bandcamp. No lead up, no Seems promo. Seems a lot of artists just, are doing this. Can you all uh, can you all do me a favor and put links on the group chat so I can check out all your stuff, all the stuff that y'all talked about? Because I do want yeah, to. Yeah, I want to see we'll make what a, I think we'll what make all of you guys are are really you know what your hearts are into. Definitely, I think we'll yeah. make a post um, with the album covers and uh, yeah, yeah, on our page, and then we'll definitely do it on the our group chat. Yeah, you know, good. you know who else dropped the banger of an album? No Bad promo, Bunny? no nothing. I mean, Bad Bunny, definitely. But uh, Charlie XEX dropped an album too. Like, a oh, my friend is a, my bandmate is obsessed with her. I love Charlie. I, I love Charlie XEX. Uh, I listened to the album. I liked it already going in, and like I, I knew it was gonna be a great album. Uh, I loved it, and then I saw Anthony Fantano reviewed it, and he gave it an 8 out of 10, and I was like, I would have gone higher, but 8 out of 10, fuck yeah, bust out the yellow flannel, Anthony. This is a <laughs> damn good record. And uh, so uh, I, what do you guys think about, uh, you know, like, what, what do you guys think this quarantine is doing for artists? Like, do you think this is going to be a good time for music? You know, nobody has anything else to do. You think people are really going to concentrate and put out a great record, you know, given the circumstances or. I, th- uh, I like think how- artists that are already well known will be, you know, yeah, yeah. be getting some praises because they need to stay in the limelight. But it's going to be yeah. harder for artists that, you know, nobody fucking knows because they can't promote their thing. And they don't have like that, that firepower <laughs> of like, hey, I'm going to just put this out, have a bunch of people like get notified on my Spotify. Like, yo, my album's out, you know, and it's the, I yeah. think artists have to do. A surprise album to stay you know afloat just because yeah. you know what what else are we doing we're just watching yeah. netflix listening to music can uh, i tell you all a secret they can... yeah all, yeah okay Us i guess it's not a secret viewers. if i'm telling everybody on here but uh i wrote like throughout this quarantine time i've written eight songs Ooh. and like I really want to, I'm kind of having this battle, like the same thing y'all were talking about of whether or not to release them right now or to wait until afterwards. Cause I also don't want it to get the vibe of like, like this is a quarantine album. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I want people to listen to it and have fond memories while they're listening to it. Not just be, you know, in their room. Like, well, I don't know. Cause like for me, Listening to yeah, music now, like I discovered a, a bunch of new songs. A and debate stuff. I'm having with myself. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like for me, I know like I've been listening to a lot of music now, like new stuff. <laughs> I think it just gives it more like, emphasis. Like, I have should more I put out content. something <laughs> like a song? One song? <laughs> <laughs> what? I like how Victoria's um, trying to like tell you. I was trying oh, kind of hard. I can't hear. I can't hear. She cuts off like the audio. I like. Um, there's no um, sound in my earbuds. <laughs> okay. Interesting. Okay, uh, so Victoria, go ahead. That was really funny. Uh, no, like I've just been listening to a lot of songs lately because I have nothing else to fucking do, and I think it's given me more time to like actually like listen to them. Because usually when I would hear songs, like it'd be like me driving somewhere or doing something when I'm busy. 
So I just kind of like hear and be like, okay, cool. It sounds good. I'm going to keep it on my song list. I'm not going to like listen to it really. And now that I have time to like listen to them, I'm just like, damn, this shit does hit real fucking hard. Or I'm like, damn, like, yeah, I can hear the like influence, the inspiration of whoever like wrote it or whatever. And I'm just like, damn, okay, these people are like really going like, like they're really like into it. Like it's not just like, a, oh, they just had nothing else to do. They just did it. So I mean, I, so some of my artists I've been following have put stuff out like EPs right now. And I was like, damn, like, I can actually like listen to what you guys are saying and like care about it past just like, oh, it sounds fun. Like, cool, it'll hype mm-hmm. me up for a bit while I go to work or something. I mean, I think it just depends on the people. I mean, I I would love it. I like hearing all the new stuff people are putting out, except Space of the remix by Doja Cat when Nicki Minaj sucked ass. Nicki really sucked up on that um, verse. She Isn't that what got her so- to number one? I don't know how. That I don't know how to fuck that one. verse. That verse sucked so badly. <laughs> Nikki's done such phenomenal work her entire career, and that was just embarrassing. I cannot respect that remix. Nikki, Nikki's say that. discography is okay. Um, in my well, opinion. I like all her features. Her features were always really good for me. Like her music, mm-hmm. I like her a lot. So, I mean, I'll vouch for that. But her features were always pretty bangers. I mean, like Monster, Kanye West, like that shit did kind of go the fuck off. So, I just have yeah, high hopes for her, her to do song. a good feature. That's why I said features. I said all her features are no listen to me for once in your fucking life. So anyway, yeah, all her features on songs are always pretty good, but she really just <laughs> she's heated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I, well I maybe you should features. put out music. Uh no, um because you get an escapist kind of uh vibe, you know, you need to just kind yeah. of escape this this I do. Thing, yeah, I'm going crazy. Right? This is horrible. The- True. I feel like my light went the, out. Also, I my think bad. Like Victoria. the weirdest consequence. Oh, don't don't worry about it. Don't worry right about now. it. I need to. Um, I, I do feel like the biggest consequence of everything we're going through right now is that now there's like a genuine genre of like quarantine music, like quarantine albums, and uh, I think that's really interesting. I think you should drop your music i feel like uh, as much as you don't want it to be associated with this situation everybody's in i think sometimes people need a fucking soundtrack to it like i think that's what made uh charlie xcx's new album so fucking impactful is that it is a quarantine album these are you know the thoughts and emotions that she's feeling while she's in quarantine and it it makes for a very relatable listen because i don't think any of the songs that I'm listening to right now can offer any sort of relatability to the situation that we're currently in. You know what I mean? And I think uh, dropping a collection of songs that may or may, that may be in that headspace might be beneficial to a lot of people to listen to something that they can relate to because we're all going through this shit. You know what I mean? Like, I can't listen to songs about, you know, going out and having fun because I can go out and have fun unless I'm listening to Carly Rae Jepsen. I can hear that all day, but, uh, uh, the exception, I feel like the only album that's making me think of like, that will make me think back to the quarantine is like the baby's new album, just cause he has his mask on. Uh, But at the same time, the baby has like every song sounding the same. So, he fucking does. Like I will say, his flow is unique, but it's pretty much stagnant throughout his discography. Um, yeah. But and maybe the albums that we listen to, like that we're discovering right now. But I don't think dropping an album and the quarantine, like the quarantine, should stop you from dropping anything. You know. Yeah, it's also a problem to also get it recorded. <laughs> Like I have mm. demos, like garage band demos that I've oh, made, yeah. but to go to an actual studio right now and have, mm. you know, someone help me out with the producing and the mixing. Yeah. So yeah, also, I'm also thinking hey, about man, everything's opening up. I know. You know, Texas know. is opening up. So. Scary. <laughs> every yeah. state, apparently every state as of today has opened up partially. Connecticut was holding yeah. out. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, it's just you know. Let's, let's just go hit to the, Siete, dude. Let's let's no, go hit this, Let's hit this <laughs> second wave hard. 
god. I got my surfboard, dude, and I'm ready to ride that second wave, dude. Let's <laughs> you shouldn't be. Go. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm kidding. I, it's I am terrified. Bro. We're going to have a meet tomorrow at work about opening up the restaurant, and I'm thinking about just calling in sick. You know, just like, hey, I'm out. Peace. Yeah, in a little bit. You know. Hopefully, they're not listening to this podcast. Oh. Uh, I mean, maybe Patrick is listening, but Patrick is a fucking jabroni. <laughs> so. <laughs> that is true. Just kidding. He made up for it. He he was on last week's episode, like, super short notice. So, shout out to Patrick Vasquez, my favorite jabroni. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got another 10 minutes. Uh, so uh, just to recap, uh, some really cool albums we talked about today. We've got Arnold's album here, which is what, what direction are you facing? And I'm trying to get okay. There. <laughs> yep, uh, yeah, you totally have Christian to point. Scott, like, rewind that. It's trial and error. Christian Scott. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna that. do this and just so uh, it's a jazz album, hip hop elements. You're into that. Mm -hmm. Give it a shot. That sounds really dope. Check out his Over new stuff too. Here. Check out his new stuff. He has new stuff. What, like, what's okay? Cool. Uh, he he like he like released it. Yeah, yeah. Just keep going. No, finish it, yeah. Arnold. Just finish it, Arnold. Finish. We have ten minutes. Say it. <laughs> he has a trilogy that he put out. I believe it was last year. It's definitely like something different. It's he's got like African roots into it. It's um you know from rewind that to now completely different. So his old discography is pretty good. So. Definitely need to check him out. If you if the guy makes his own subgenre of jazz, you have to check it out. So I could make my own subgenre of jazz. Doesn't mean you have to check it out. Uh, <laughs> could you really? Could you make your own subgenre of anything? Could you? Because people know. always make jazz. sound like whenever people talk to our project quest texas franny we were always compared to other people's works we coined the phrase yeah. indie mo let let me remind you but would anyone camp, say that we out show loud? up as indie mo no but we, would anyone did, say that? no <laughs> we did no. not sound like that there you go nobody would <laughs> Nobody would even say that they listened to us out loud, <laughs> so we could call it whatever we wanted. We were burrito core if we wanted. We to were be. far off from indie mo. If anything, we were like maybe an emo emo hardcore, but more emo than hardcore. Um, hardcore I'm, from where, dude? Yeah, we had we had hardcore. the fuzz. We had the fuzz and the screams. Come on. What did you all play? Okay, like, yeah, what did. instruments? Right, okay. Well, uh, well, I was bass. Franny was vocals. Uh, you can check us out at questtexas.bandcamp.com. Wow. So oh that's quest, Q-U-E-S-T, <laughs> Texas, T-E-X-A-S, dot bandcamp.com. Um, <laughs> uh, plug in a dead band. That's what that's the move. Plug in dead band. Plug in dead band. We had one demo that was recorded on my sister's car, like a microphone on my sister's car in my garage. And then we had one that was actually recorded by Raul Gonzalez or Gonzi de la Noche, aka um, Gonzi de la Noche. And uh, we that's on our who's band been camp. a guest on this show. And yeah, and he was a part of our band. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> he technically was. We played like ten shows. Yeah. Wow, you did. I didn't know that. Secretly, no we're only making in. this. We're only making this podcast so people can go back to our songs. <laughs> No, we, they shouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I hope they do. I want them to hear Quest Texas and be like, it, that, that's Franny and Arnold, okay. It was a bop. Indie it was Mo, a bop. I guess. It was. Eh, it was a bop. You know, it, pre -bop. it was pre-bop. You know what? Uh, uh, on the show that we played where we first met Victoria, I had that tendency of playing barefoot, and we were playing on like a rickety-ass stage, and I stepped on a nail. Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. That you fucking did. I, you got pizza without me. I've literally bled for the art, dude. I've bled for the art. You got pizza without yeah. me too. Where were you? No, Where that was a different show. That was a different show. Yeah, the the show where that we was met Winterfest. Vic is the show we did it. No, we we played at the old Cafe Dolce, and it was a. Uh, 
Oh, it, it, it was it was a birthday show. That bitch's yeah. birthday. Yeah. Hell yeah! That, because she is that. Absolutely, no, that is a fact. And uh, Victoria agrees. And I, I agree. stepped on a nail, so yeah. that that was. Didn't fun. you almost she step on a nail at the dugout too? I remember that one too. Did you not? Yeah, that almost happened. Yeah. So, okay. Carrying I, on I to our. List. I think. I, I think. Sure. Okay. The next topic we got courtship, denial, and paradise. Uh, what what is a, a like a, an artist that you kind of relate this to, so people can get a grasp of it? Like, oh, if I like this, you might like this. Damn. I don't know. <laughs> it's because they're they're one of the things where like when I hear them, I can't think of anything else, and that's why I like them so much. Because I was like, okay, cool. Like, mm -hmm. I guess it's like unique in a way. But I can tell you someone yeah. who. Let's see. Oh, apparently they're compared to Coast Modern a lot. It's, or if you've ever heard the band, yeah, okay, thank you. Anyway, uh, if you've heard the band, the band Floor, I know they're also compared to them too. I know they're bigger. Or Coin, Grizz Folk. I know a Floor is a good su a good support for people, especially artists when they're on stage. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I don't know. You have to listen to it to find out. I'm sorry. I, I can't give you much more than that. Let's force our no listeners okay. to listen to that. And uh, we've got the next album here by Lex. This is Stokely. Yeah. Introducing Stokely. Mm -hmm. So uh, any final thoughts about the record? Uh, no, if, you, if you're if you into stuff like, like I'm really into Erica Badu and Jill Scott and Lenny Kravitz and stuff nice. like that. If you're into the groovy stuff, a good bass line, good melodies you're gonna love this album <clears throat> also if you're into like the modern r&b sounds like uh i don't know if y'all know tank like the r&b singer or miguel oh, no. yes miguel i know yeah if i fuck with miguel pretty yeah heavy. he's real good if you're into that you'll love this album for sure nice yeah nice nice mm -hmm. so check it out introducing stokely and as for me uh gregory and the hawk mini kichi a uh, beautiful album if you want to feel like if you want to listen to music that if you close your eyes you feel like you're in a, a field of like sunflowers and just the sun is hitting your face listen to this album it's fucking beautiful uh would you say yeah that, I, is it for fans of the scene aesthetic <sighs> Only in the and... sense that they're from the same era and they're both acoustic acts. That is the only way that I could say for fans of scene aesthetic. Uh, but uh, no, give it a listen. It, it's fucking gorgeous. Uh, give a listen to her newest record on the Orange Mountain and uh, listen to your local artists. Check out Lex and her other band, Valle Campa. Check out Kayampa. <laughs> Kayampa? How is it? Yeah. Uh, yes. It's the yeah. double L. It's shit. double. Yeah, no, yeah, it's the L. Kayampa, yeah. So, you got I'm it. Sorry, I'm really. Mexican. No, that was good. Yeah. <laughs> no, you got I'm it. Not pretty fucked up, <laughs> It's because you said, it's because you said Kampa. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm pretty sure I put the double L's in let's there. Do a, let's do a, a review, uh, a rewind. So let's, one more time, Franny. Uh, well, 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 Vaya Kayampa. Did I get it right this time? Yeah, yeah. You... She did the thing. It sounds like I did. Dope. So check them out. Check out uh, Raul Gonzalez. Uh, I think uh, Let Love also released uh, some, some tracks. So check them out. All local artists. If you want to go a little bit far out, uh, our good friend Alexander Leary, aka Good Going, he's going to be releasing a new track every month. So check him out as well. And, uh, you know, like this West page Texas. and keep up with us. Uh, eh, let, let, the dead, let the dead stay Let the dead stay dead. And uh, <laughs> it's just something to turn to just for our listeners to be like, hey, wow, let, let, let's connect to the, our. Our host and our co-host of the show, you know? All right. Okay. Yeah. Check out Quest Texas. Um, <laughs> and, and I guess that's it for, for today. Uh, 
be sure to check in on Sunday, Sunday, 7.30. We're going to be uh, joined by Joel Alexander, a great guy, most positive dude I know, and we'll be reviewing uh, The Swellers, Good For Me, which is apparently like the most essential pop punk record of the mid-2010s. So that's going to be mm-hmm. fun. Check that out. Uh, yeah, you guys have a great night. Right. And I'm Andy DeBar. Good night, y'all.